Now, last time <coughs> we were studying the Lagrangian for a relativistic free charge particle without interacting with electric and magnetic field. Then we take into account to the interaction of the charge particle with the electric and magnetic field. So let us quickly remember what we have done. So basically we are working with the tools of classical mechanics. So action is defined as a Lagrangian integral from one time interval to the other time interval, which depends on qi, qi dot, and t. So if you have a two locations, so you can perform the action integral with various paths such that you can search the what are the extremum conditions and the extremum conditions are the variations of the action have to be zero. You have two options maximum or minimum in that integral and using this variation of the action you drive in the classical mechanic courses to the earlier Lagrange equations. Del L over del QI dot over DT minus del L over del QI have to be equal to zero. So all the time we talk about that the covariant equations. So we talk about that the four dimensional Lorentz force have to be covariant. Maxwell's equations are have to be covariant in different inertial frames. So basically we were looking at the action should be invariant if we have looked at the same action different inertial frames and also the Lagrangian. But sometimes Lagrangian could change time to time but uh, this action doesn't change. So in that picture you can write that the action is a dt with it and we know that the dt is nothing but uh, nothing but Lorentz factor times the proper time and the proper time is the same for every observer but gamma is not the same. So we search a Lagrangian for the free charge particle and we find that the free charge particle has to be has the following Lagrangian. So we have minus mc square over gamma and why we did this because the action integral have to be taken from t1 to t2 and the action should be invariant in the frames for an inertial frame. So I know that the dt is gamma d tau and I should arrange the, my invariant in that form because gamma and gamma will be cancelled mc square minus mc square is the same in all frames, c is the same for every frame and proper time is the same for every observer. So we set up the Lagrangian for the free charge particle as a minus mc square over gamma and we find that the equation of motion, we find that the relativistic momentum, then we look to Hamiltonian and we find that the energy of the relativistic charge particle. So second, we try to investigate that the interaction term and the scalars we have This is a scalar. 
So it is the same in all frames. So this is the four velocity times the four vector. And, but in that form, it is affected by this gamma, and then you can normalize this by dividing gamma and C times C for giving the units. And the form of the Lagrangian, which is interacting with the charged particles, have to be in this form. So that should be minus E over gamma C uh, U alpha A alpha and in the open form that is equal to the following. So U alpha is gamma C um, minus gamma U and E alpha is scalar potential and uh, time coordinate is scale potential and the uh, space coordinate is the vector potential and that scalar product will give you the following E minus E over gamma C and that scalar product will be the gamma C times the scalar potential minus u dot a so gamma factors will be cancelled c will be cancelled and we will have the interaction term as a minus e times scalar potential plus e over c u dot e and i know that the charge is invariant c is the same error frame we have one over, one over gamma, which is normalized, which is cancelled with that gamma, and I know that the d tau is the same in every frame. Therefore, this action is invariant frame to frame. Then you can write that the equation of motions. So the interaction term of the charge with the electric and magnetic field is this and we know that if there is no any vector potential that is nothing but minus minus e times the scalar potential and uh, that is the potential energy of the scalar potential so in non-relativistic limit we have only this term so this is a interaction with Lagrangian for non-relativistic case and this part for the relativistic case. Now I give you as an exercise some of this free and uh, interaction term and write the total Lagrangian and find the equation of motion and if you find the equation of motion, you will find that the three-dimensional uh, Lorentz force. Now, let us look at what is going on if we calculate that the Hamiltonian of this total Lagrangian. So, the Lagrangian at hand is the following. Minus mc square over gamma it is equal to minus mc square 1 minus u square over c square this term is nothing but 1 over gamma and we have the interaction term e over c u dot a minus e phi so this is the whole Lagrangian so let so in order to find that the Hamiltonian, we have to find that the canonical momentum multiply with the uh, u and subtract with the Lagrangian. So canonical momentum pi is the derivative of the Lagrangian with the velocity 
And if you do this, you will find gamma mui plus derivative of this with respect to the ui will be e over c ai. So if you take the derivative of that, you will have minus 1 over 2 times 2 and the exponent goes to the from 1 over 2 to the minus 1 over 2 and this becomes this is 1 over gamma and this becomes gamma so and the additional term e over c times the uh, vector potential so this piece is the momentum of the relativistic charge particle if there's no any interaction if there's no this term this will be the momentum of the relativistic charge particle if we don't have any interaction term we will obtain this we already obtained this last time so this is the let us denote by small p that is the momentum of the relativistic charge particle if there is no interaction with the electric and magnetic field. And this is the canonical momentum, capital P. And we have the additional term E over C times the vector potential. Now let us move on to the Hamiltonian. Then Hamiltonian is equivalent to the energy of the particle which is interacting electric and uh, magnetic field. So H could be written as from the definition from the classical mechanics P dot U minus L. Now let us try to calculate the Hamiltonian. So small p, let us take the small p as a capital P minus E over C A. And small p is nothing but gamma m times the velocity. So p dot p, p square is equivalent to P minus E over C absolute square and it is equal to gamma square M square U square. So this square of the scalar let us call it D square and the right hand side is M square u square over gamma times gamma square is that is nothing but 1 minus u square over c square. So take this to the here and solve for the so if you take this to the left that will be d square minus d square u square c square is equal to m square u square and So from here you can solve the u in terms of the d, u square in terms of d square is equal to d square c square m square c square plus d square. So take to the other side, take the u parenthesis and you will obtain that. And that u so that is the u square. Basically, u in, in terms of d is equal to c d divided by d square plus m square c square. So this is a straightforward algebra. So and if you plug the d there and that will be the following. U will be 
c times d d is equal to capital P minus e over c a divided by square root of m square c square d square and where is the d square d square is the square of that term P minus E over C A subscript square. So we will use this equation. So let me repeat what I did. It's simple. So I write the P square as a square of this term, gamma square, M square, U square. I call this a D square. I solve for the U square and take the square root of two root and instead of u write instead of d vector and plug the d vector inside and you will have the, this stuff for the u. Now take this and try to re-evaluate the Hamiltonian again. So Hamiltonian, let us write the definition again. Hamiltonian is P that u minus l and it is equal to uh, p dot u minus l, l is over there so minus l means that the minus minus plus mc square 1 minus u square over c square and minus E over C V and uh, sorry E over C E E over C U dot A and the other term will be plus A V. So this is the definition of the Hamiltonian. We had the presentation of representation of u in, instead of in, in terms of the capital P and the vector potential. Okay, so you have this term and this term. You can write this as a in the u parenthesis u dot p minus e over c a plus e feed and plus that term m c square 1 minus u square over c square. So in the u parenthesis we have p minus e over c a and you have this term and the other term there. And now take the u from here and substitute there. So then you will obtain what? Instead of u, take the u over there and put it there. Plug in here. u is equal to c times p minus e over c a dot p minus e over c a, that is the next term, divided by p minus e over c a square plus m square c square plus e phi minus m square mc square 1 minus u square over c square. So we take the u and put it instead of here. So we substitute here. We have this term. We have this term. We have that term also. So one more thing we are going to do, instead of u square, we will take the square of this and plug in here. 
and it will be it seems to be long term long expression but you will see that it will collect it and we will find a very nice result eventually so let us take the u and put it here as a u square and let us write this whole expression again now let me try to write the things more smaller formats h is c times p minus e over c a square divided by square root of 2 p minus e over c a square plus m square c square we have the potential here let me write the potential here and the rest is m c square c square times 1 minus u square over c square and where is the u? u is here and this we have to take the square so 1 minus let me take the c square here and instead of u square take the square of this So that is equal to C square P minus E over C A square divided by P minus E over C A square plus m square c square Okay, so these C squares cancel. So if you multiply this with here, and you will see that the, this term and that term will be cancelled, and you will left with the square root of m C square, and that will be the this stuff all will be m C. over divided by this term so the bottom line is the following this term will be m c square we have times m c divided by uh, square root of p minus e over c a square plus m square c square and we have the same here so these terms are the same therefore in the and basically let me say let me say instead of this we can write this whole term so the bottom line is the following Hamiltonian will be what? This is m square c cube. So if you take the c parentheses, c parentheses, we have p minus e over c a square.
square. And we have here m square c square divided by square root of the same quantity p minus e over c a square plus m square c square. And the additional term is e v. So this term belongs to that there. Okay. So let me tell you again. If you multiply both sides with this term, this and that term will be cancelled. You will left it with the square root of m square c square that is m c, and this whole term uh, will be in the down. And this term and that term are the same, and you will obtain that. So, basically, the situation is the following. The Hamiltonian H, H could be written as in the following form. So, this whole term, and this is the square of of 2 of the whole term that is equal to c times square root of p minus e over c a square plus m square m square c square e p. So we have a nice expression here and what this expression tell us so if you go to the specific case if there is no any interaction scalar potential is zero vector potential is zero and this H is the energy. And what is this? If there is no interaction, if A is zero and P is zero, so that is E, and that becomes what? C times P square, M square, C square, or P square, C square, M square to the C to the 4. Do you remember this expression? This is the energy of the relativistic charge particle. So if there is an interaction, the situation is in that form, or you can take to the inside, make this C square and uh, and this becomes, so yes, you can put it inside as a C square and distribute that, and that will be the C to the fourth. Now, take this to the other side and say that the Hamiltonian is the energy of the particle, then you will have E minus E phi is. equal to the distribute the C inside that will be what? That will be C P minus E A square M square C to the 4. Okay, distribute this inside is a C square and that becomes C C times C because you have the square there. So if you take the square of this, you will obtain E minus E phi square. And this will be C P minus E A square M square C to the 4.
So then take this to the other side and divide the things to the c square. What we are going to obtain? d minus e phi over c square minus minus p minus e over c a square. is equal to m square c square. So did I make it correctly? So you did divide everything to the c square and this is the form. Now do you familiar this one? When there is no potential this is zero. If then there is no vector potential that is zero. And what is this? e over c square minus p square is equal to what? Length of the for momentum of the relativistic charge particle. But we have the additional terms here. So the energy is reduced by the existence of the scalar potential and the momentum is redefined as a canonical momentum. So the bottom line is the following. You can define that the for momentum. The for momentum now for interacting of the charged particle with the electric and magnetic fields will be the, in the following form. So P alpha for momentum is represents as a 1 over C E minus E phi. This is the time coordinate of the four momentum that is the energy and the momentum, momentum is P minus E over C A. And if this is the definition of the four momentum of the charge interacting with the electric and magnetic field, and if you take the scalar product by itself, you will obtain the what? 1 over C square E minus E phi square minus P minus E over C A square and this length is invariant that is M square C square. So we can dis describe that uh, define that the for momentum of the charged particle which is interacting with the electric and magnetic field. So this is a nice Lagrangian. If you find the, that was the homework for you of that Lagrangian, if you find that the, apply for the earlier Lagrange equations, you will find that the Lorentz force. And if you calculate that the Hamiltonian, you will find that the, we find that the energy which is modified by the existence of the scalar and the vector potential. And using this, you can find that the form momentum and the length of the form momentum is m square c square. So these are the cases for the, without interacting with the fields, uh, yes, fields, if there's no electric and magnetic fields, so then you don't have the scalar and the vector potentials. If there is, this is the form of the four, uh, four momentum and the length of the four momentum. And this is same in every frame, inertial frame. So if you go a different frame, let's say beta and beta, this doesn't change. This length doesn't change. So, so far we find that uh, we define that the Lagrangian, we find that the equation of motion, and we define that the form momentum. So, last week we defined that the covariant form of the four dimensional Lorentz force, but here the things are 
if you find that uh, if you use this Lagrangian and using the earlier Lagrange equation, you will find a Lorentz force in three dimension. So we will next, these are the elementary approach to the relativistic Lagrangian and Hamiltonian. So now next thing is the, we will look at the extensive covariant treatment of the uh, treatment of the uh, Lagrangian. So the idea is the following. We defined that the free Lagrangian as a minus mc square over gamma. And what was our tool? The action. So action was minus mc square over gamma dt from one time to the other time interval. And we said that we can write that the Euler Lagrange equations from using the variation of the action. And time was again gamma times theta. Now for the covariant four dimensional forms of the equations, we need a a new scaling. So dt is the coordinate is changing in time to time. So instead of this, we can write this <coughs> integral in that form. So if you plug this information to here, gammas will be cancelled and you will obtain minus mc square d tau from one interval to the other time interval, proper time interval. So proper time or proper length, if you multiply this by c, are universal uh, invariants. So basically, we can define that the action in the following form. And how about the c square? What is the c square? c square is, do you remember that the c square? That is the scalar product of the four velocity with itself. So it is nothing but u alpha u alpha. And this is invariant. If you take the derivative, you will find zero. And the action could be written in the following form. Take the minus i side from proper time in for any triple proper time interval and say mc times the square root of that term u alpha u alpha and this is integrated through the d tau. Now in this presentation what you can what you can say about that the earlier Lagrange equations. For the above, the standard classical mechanical approach, the integral have to be taken from the t. And the earlier Lagrange equations written with respect to the what? Time. But here, the action is taken with respect to the proper time. Then, the, if you take the variation of this, earlier Lagrange equations could be written in terms of the proper time. So more generally, we can write the following. So look, let us investigate this. And is this invariant in all frames? Yes, because this is C, this is C, this is D top. So the action is the same in all uh, inertial frames. So let us pick up this term square root of u alpha u alpha d tau and write this in a more clear format that is equal to dx alpha d tau dx alpha d tau and d tau. As you see that this piece is independent of d tau 
instead of the tau, you can say ds. ds is the but a length element in the word line, proper length. So proper length ds is equal to c times the proper time. So basically, you can write this in the following form. So that is equal to that is equal to. So let us cancel this d tau, and that is equal to uh, dx alpha dx alpha. So we can write this with the help of the metric tensor in the following form. Let's say dx alpha is down, and let's say dx beta, and contract this with the metric tensor. So that is g alpha beta. So if you contract beta and beta, this goes up and that becomes dx alpha and d tau are cancel out. And instead of writing in that format, you can write this in the following format also. So let us divide the things to the ds proper length. So we can write this as a, in the following form, g alpha beta dx alpha over ds, dx beta over ds times ds. All of them are the same thing. All of them are the same thing. We did nothing. So this is telling you that instead of integrating or writing the action interval integral proper time, you can write the action integral with ds and ds is the length element in the word line. So if you think about the uh, ct and space, so this is the light cone. And so there's a word line here. And here, any element here is the ds. OK, you can write that the action in terms of ds. So all stuff is equal to at the same time is what? They are all equal. This is nothing but C times D tau. So this tells you that the action integral could be written as action integral could be written as Instead of writing the proper time, one proper time, the other proper time, you can write uh, any length for the word line of the particle. So that is equal to, that is equal to minus mc, minus mc here. And instead of u alpha, square root of u alpha, u alpha times d tau, you can use the general presentation in that form. G alpha beta dx alpha over ds, dx beta over ds have to be integrated to the ds from S1 to S2. So we can express the action in that form. And if we want to find the equation of motion, we have to look at the variation of this, equate to the zero, and the earlier Lagrange equations will be in the following form. D over ds, del Lagrangian over, what are the velocities here? dx over ds are the velocities. So del over the del Lagrangian over del with respect to the change of the alpha coordinates with respect to the s minus del Lagrangian over del x alpha. So basically, we don't have any dependence of the Lagrangians with, with the coordinates. We have the Lagrangian. So argument of the element here is the Lagrangian. And this Lagrangian has the uh, elements 
dependence with respect to the derivative of the coordinates with respect to the proper length. And basically our Lagrangian at this point is nothing but this whole stuff. So the Lagrangian we have is minus mc g alpha beta dx alpha over ds dx beta over ds. So what we did, what we did actually, instead of writing the action to the time, we write the action with respect to the d tau, then we convert the d tau to the ds. And ds is the proper length in four dimension uh, that describes the particles word line. So basically if we have a CT and X, so these 45 degrees are the light separation. Uh, and if you have a word line here from one point to the other point, you can define that the S1 and S2 in four dimension. So the S a proper length that is invariant and this is nothing but mc squared that is invariant. This mc so this stuff is the Lagrangian and that Lagrangian could be written in terms of the four vectors and the changes of the four vectors with respect to the proper length. So you can think about the dx, I, lambda, dx alpha over ds as a velocity as the changes. Then the earlier Lagrange equation should be in that format. For the free Lagrangian, this will be the free Lagrangian. As you see that there is no any dependence with the coordinates. This, they are dependence with respect to the derivative of the coordinates. Then I will take that Lagrangian, plug in here. I will take the derivative with respect to the dx over alpha over ds. And I will find that the what four dimensional uh, equation of motion. Then I will include the interaction term. Now let us give a break, then uh, I will do this uh, calculation, I, then we can continue.